website that I operate. It's called THC College. <laughs> and you'll notice on one of the links there that there's a dosing calculator. Uh, let me know if anybody's got there before I finish up talking about it. But THCCollege.com's dosing calculator will take a, a way where you can enter the amount that your package says. If you're not sure, or if you don't have a package that tells you how much is in a dropper or in a tablespoon, if you're making something at home and you know the total amount of cannabinoids you're putting into your volume, well, this calculator is going to help you to know how much is in a tablespoon, how much is going to be in a batch of 12 cookies if you were making, or muffins, or whatever you're making. You can actually uh, divide the amount of your product into your doses. So it's a healthy way to know that you're not using more than necessarily you need to, and not using less as well. Uh, obviously, CBD is not harmful, but uh, it's also not very affordable if, if you consider uh, the amount that you need to really uh, be using this as a supplement in your daily regimen. Uh, so what I like to do, as I mentioned, is take something like a honey, get it in a, a mason jar. If you've got an induction burner or a way to heat up some water, if this mason jar gets in there and is, gets to a temperature just over 165 degrees, if you're doing that with other oils and so forth, you're really not cooking the oil. It's heating it to the point where you can safely and uh, easily add the other plant fats into it, like the CBD. So if you take this oil, or an isolate, for example, and you were to put it into this honey at that temperature, well, it mixes it in easily, and it uh, is divided amongst the whole product. Anybody have any questions about how to do an emulsification? You've seen it done before, or ever done one? Uh -huh. This is just a question. Yeah. Once you do that, uh, what's the uh, shelf life of, of that? If I follow the calculation, and Great question. I would say, take, uh, take a look at the product's actual description. If you could look at what the shelf life of honey is. You bet. CBD is going to be a, a, a fractional amount of what the total volume is of this. Um, so, yeah, shelf life, I would say, depends on the product. Obviously, how you keep it stored. Uh, anything that's a fat can become rancid. If it has oxygen to it, it can actually uh, affect it. So, light can also affect it. Keeping it in a cool place is great. If you ever needed to heat it up again, a quick even 10 seconds in the microwave is all you would need, of course, with the lid off, right? <laughs> Does that answer your question? Yeah. Thanks. All right. Did you all get to the link? Did you find it okay, the dosing calculator, or was that an issue for you? Let me know. All right. So if you've got it, uh, anytime you want to practice with that or fiddle around with it, um, you can experiment to see what it is that your product has in it. Um, now... If you're familiar with the other cannabinoid, tetrahydrocannabinol, uh, CBD is something that is what many folks say has healing properties and the fact of anti-inflammatory. Anybody have any other uh, knowledge of what CBD is helpful for? Anxiety, maybe some stress, maybe that's how our thoughts are. Okay, what else? Pain? Yeah, for me, especially pain. Yeah, um, what else? Sure, sleep patterns. Essentially, our bodies uh, in a day can be bombarded with surroundings and our own emotions and our thoughts it can really use a lot of. Go ahead. So, I have something that I call fire in the and my eyes move back and forth, what happens to But I find that with the nerves, thing, with the nerves that aren't connected with it, it helps my eyes move back and forth. I don't know exactly what that was called on the lineup, but I feel that that's. Interesting that you're talking about that. Is CBD legal? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, hemp is where we derive our uh, legal cannabinoid CBD that we can get over the counter. Now, CBD is also available in the marijuana flowers, which is the same plant. It just has a higher percentage of tetrahydrocannabinol. Essentially, the government today, or uh, the Farm Bill in 2018, 
uh, identifies hemp as a cannabis plant with less than a third of a percent of tetrahydrocannabinol. So a fraction of a percent of THC, which is the psychoactive chemical in the plant, is just minuscule. Uh, it's not known to cause the, what they associate as a high. Now, cannabidiols give them a, a change in their mental state, but it's not a high that they experience. Some feel subdued, others relaxed, like we talked about with anxieties and stresses and so forth. Now, if you're around CBD, is it just absorbable without touching it or consuming it? Like, how, how do you absorb CBD into your body? We already know it's a fat. Guess what? We're what? About 80% water in our bodies, yeah? It's kind of a little difficult sometimes to have a bioavailability to actually have absorption into our system to make it useful. So let's say it even says that there's a dosage in your amount of oil. If you're not using other fats to help aid the absorption of your cannabinoids, well, you might have some loss. Now there's many studies that have been done to say what is the most available absorption that your body can do. Anybody want to guess whether it's your skin topically or through your mouth or by inhaling it? Anybody want to guess what the most bioavailable absorption is? Say again? Lungs? Mm, good, good question. Say again? Yeah, sublingual or buccal. Yeah, you bet. So we, yeah, this is why there's a lot of medicines these days. Yeah, it's suppository. Well, the linings that we have right here. Yeah, that's where a lot of our dosages come in. And you'll see that actually in the products downstairs. They have the bottles that will show you know, a dropper. Typically, it's a milliliter dropper. So if you've got a 30 milliliter jar or, or volume and you take a one milliliter dropper, you'll most likely use through, go through your supply in 30 applications if you're using a one milliliter dropper in a 30 milliliter jar. Go ahead. Before I started taking my CBD, I, uh, I called my CBD and uh, I was told after, you know, that he got back to me, uh, there's no control, and he said that, uh, I had a question about taking it. And yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Great question, actually. Yeah. So I, uh, so she came back with me, uh, the next day, you know, on my, my chart. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I said, well, I have to know, she left me a voice now. Okay. And I was told to call back, and I was told that, uh, uh, she was going to call back. Now, to follow up on what you're saying, has anybody ever heard that, where if you're ingesting CBD internally, that there might be a conflict with other prescription medicines. Anybody ever heard that? Topically as well? Okay. Well, I'll mention why the science is behind that and why the warnings are there. It's because our livers are typically what's going to be used to process cannabinoids when we ingest them. Uh, there is an enzyme, which is the P450 gland inside your liver, which processes um, these types of uh, analgesics and things that will help us in, in our body that need to be processed simply. The liver, through the liver. Now, if you're taking a medication that requires that gland, well, some certain medications will occupy that versus the CBD. Or more likely, what they tell us is CBD will start to occupy that space in your liver. And if you were to take a prescription medicine that does have uh, a high dosage in it, it might not be processed because CBD is occupying the enzymatic function of the liver. Um, makes sense. It's natural. It's probably more beneficial than the other things out there. So the liver would probably choose that versus the other ingested medication. So that's why they have a warning. doesn't mean you can't stagger your doses. I would say take, taking it at the same time might be the risk, but there is such thing as half-life. There is ways that these things get out of our system by being used. So that's why we consider dosing. When you go get a prescription and they tell you to put it under your tongue, they might tell you to do it two or three times a day versus all at once, right? Why is that the case? Why do we want to repeat our dosing? Metabolism. You got it. Yeah, our, we metabolize it. it. It gets used in our body. So that bioavailable absorption of the cannabinoid CBD will have a life inside of us, and then it'll either, if it's not stored kinetically in other fats in our body, it's used up. So a regimen supplementing with your dosing repeatedly, uh, some folks say every two to four hours is about the time that that gets through your system. So if you're dosing, what most folks will consider a medicinal dose. 
teppanyaki chef. Um, yeah, the medicinal dose is, is going to be um, necessary to reapply to get the most bioavailable absorption to get the efficacy of the product. So that's why you'll notice sometimes on these jars they'll tell you um, it's 10 milligrams. It's going to be a dose that they would consider to have a medicinal effect. Anything above that, you would get more effect from it. Some folks that are in severe pains or in, uh, have sleep problems, that, uh, stresses, it, pain, a, a variety of different things, some of them are, and from the back in the day when they were testing this on folks, doc, Dr. Raphael Meshalom is the Israeli scientist that actually discovered these cannabinoids and started to really essentially help us understand that we have a system inside our body that responds to this plant. Um, so what they're finding is when they were dosing high doses, sometimes over 1,000 milligrams uh, for these patients, sometimes 4,000 milligrams for some of these narcoleptic patients, that they were finding results there was actually a response to the catalyst of CBD in the body. So this science that started to come around started to tell us, wait a minute, there's a way that we could benefit from this. And this was only, shoot, in the 60s. Then it wasn't until I think in the 1990s that they actually told us that there's what they call the ECS. If you're familiar with that term, it's a, uh, anybody want to take a shot at what the ECS is? Endocannabinoid system. That's it. Endogenous cannabinoid system. So the cannabinoid cannabidiol, and the other cannabinoids that are found, there's many of them, close to 100 and plus, they're finding that these will bind to receptors in our body. Now, cannabinoid CBD is not necessarily a binder to these, but they help regulate the function of the absorption of other um, things like terpenes and other cannabinoids like THC. CBD has been known to help the other plants, chemicals, be more effective. Uh, or even take some of the um, edge that some folks describe as um, when you do have a medicine that has THC in it or other cannabinoids like CBN, it can help reduce the overall psychoactivity of it, or at least help the anxieties part of it. Um, I'll tell you, if we're t taking a dose under our tongue and we do that in the morning or at night, but we're at work all day, it might be difficult for us to be in the office doing our thing. So sometimes what we'll do is we'll do like Tyler's doing, is we'll make our meal for the day, we'll do some food meal prep for the week, and we'll know, hey, that volume of honey that I just made uh, a batch of different, uh, I don't know, banana bread or something like that, you can say, if I have a slice, I will know I'll get a, a dose, and I've got many more slices, and you know you can consume CBD in that way. You can, like what I do, when I step out of the shower or I use the shower, I have lotions. So, you know, I find my vascular areas, my veins, or sorry, my pores are kind of open. So I like to, on my epidermis, slather on my CBD in the areas where I know I'm going to hurt. My sciatica, my L5, or what's it called, L5S1, something like that, S5L1. That thing kills me. And so I know, hey, for the day, if I know I want some relief, then to take some of that uh, numb and that electrical kind of droning feeling, I can topically ap apply my CBD because I already infused it. There, will, there might be some down there you'll see that are lotions that you can take your own favorite lotion, your Avenos or your spa stuff, the very favorite ones that have shea butters and cocoa butters and all the things that are other fats that will bind the CBD. If you do happen to heat that uh, lotion up, perhaps in a, a way that works to emulsify that other lotion, you could have a, your own blend of even more fortified. Some of the products that we get out there might not give you the amount of CBD that you want, and then purchasing another bottle of tincture oil or uh, hemp CBD oil and adding that into your lotion might be a way to just amplify your effect of CBD being applied topically. So transdermally is where we have the absorption that goes directly into our bloodstream that way, uh, under the tongue, directly in the bloodstream. But when we swallow, uh, and it goes into our stomach, that's when we start processing our cannabinoids through our liver. So there is some time difference in how you might feel the effects. That's why I like to supplement a variety of different ways. Not only is my coconut oil what I rub on my body after the shower, but by the time my tea or coffee's done, I take a tablespoon of my honey, which is already infused, mm -hmm. and I'll make that into a delicious CBD uh, beverage. And by the time I've walked out the door, I've already got about 40 milligrams of CBD is a, a healthy dose for keeping my pain stay away. 
Does that make sense to, to you guys that there's a, a way that you don't have to feel like it's a medicine all the time, but you still get the medicinal effects? If you, oh, go ahead. That's the hope. Yeah, that's the hope. Well, that's it. It's, right now, there over over uh, fifty percent of the states either have a medicinal or legal access to it. Uh, I think like Idaho, uh, a couple other states, Wyoming. There's. That's true. So this little thing I'm passing around is an infusion I made. It's just some uh, salt for the bath. It's a scrub that has terpene in it. So 